Welcome to this evening's San Rafael Mayoral Candidate Forum. As a nonpartisan organization, Canal Alliance neither supports nor opposes any political party or candidate for public office. Tonight, we will pose a series of questions to the two candidates running for San Rafael mayor to fulfill a four-year term. The mission of the city of San Rafael is to enhance the quality of life and provide for a safe, healthy, prosperous, and livable environment in partnership with the community. The candidate's vision for San Rafael is to be a vibrant economic and cultural center reflective of its diversity with unique and distinct neighborhoods in a beautiful natural environment sustained by active and informed residents and a responsible and innovative local government. This forum is being recorded and will be shared after the event. Canal Alliance is not responsible for comments made by the public during this recording, although we will monitor them during the event. Candidates, please speak slowly for the interpreters translating the forum for our Spanish speaking audience. Time for each answer is limited to four minutes to give both candidates an opportunity to respond to all questions asked during the forum. We ask that the candidates not pose questions to each other. We will begin with opening statements from both candidates. Candidates, you will each have two minutes to introduce yourselves to our audience this evening. Kate Collin, Please begin our opening statements. You have two minutes. Thank you, Stephanie and Canal Alliance for offering this opportunity to connect with the Latino community. It is only fitting that it's Hispanic Heritage Month, and that's a time when we look past and forward and reflect on the contributions of our Latino community. I also wanna reflect on the past and the future. So looking back, I have represented your voice on the council for the past seven years. I'm delighted at the relationships we've built together and honored to share in your traditions. Traditions like Dios de los Muertos. It is important that San Rafael represent the many cultures we have here and ensure that city policies are inclusive. When San Rafael voted to change to district elections, I was the only council member to vote in favor of the district map that was created by our Latino community. Four years ago, working with your community leaders, I created the Latino Civic Leadership Initiative so that our volunteer boards reflect the beautiful diversity of our city. Because of these efforts, we now have two bilingual, Spanish, bicultural individuals on our planning commission. And most recently, I partnered with Canal Alliance and other key agencies around the important work having to do with Census 2020. We need to count everybody. As mayor, I will continue to partner like that, in the, like I have in the past, in the future. So looking ahead, as we address the impacts of the pandemic, we need to have a solid and experienced and proven leader. I am that leader, and as mayor, I will bring all of this experience knowledge and community connections to guide us and to serve you in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Mahmoud Chirazi, please introduce yourself. You have two minutes. Good afternoon. This is Mahmoud Chirazi. I appreciate the Stephanie for the opportunity and I appreciate the Canal Alliance for having me as a guest so I can share some of my ideas, what I have for this beautiful community. Um, I am an immigrant myself and I became a US citizen. So my eyes are on the canal area as a Silicon Valley of San Rafael. Uh, right now we are bringing talent from all over the place, but my eyes are on canal for the young people and we have so many talents in that area. So I like to bring um, a vast area of 
technology, high technology to the area. So our people can learn basically in a school and become um, one of a kind in, in our area and work for our own city. The pandemic has created some problem for the, for the Marine County and so many other places, but the canal area is because it's um, so crowded and people are living as a whole together the, the problem has um, has ex is basically spread out more than anywhere else. Some other parts of that problem is because of the drug use. I like to um, address the drug use basically and the sharing of, of, of the elements of the drugs. So this pandemic would get going is not is not because of people living together is because they are sharing uh, whatever they are using in their practices. So that's what I like to do basically for the area. I wanted to bring high tech uh, Wi-Fi, but the work is already done. And um, and the housing is another area that I like to uh, address and, and work for the canal area. Um, diversity is what we have in San Rafael and I like to keep it in downtown area and all over the place. So canal, is at the top of my priority and as soon as I get to us I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get things done as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. Welcome candidates. As a resident, as a former resident uh, of the Sun Valley neighborhood, and the Advocacy and Policy Senior Manager at Canal Alliance. Canal Alliance. I, am I am invested in, in the current and future issues facing the low-income immigrant community in San Rafael. As we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, I think about my parents who emigrated to the U.S. from Argentina a few months before I was born. In honoring the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America, we envision a time when we will also be celebrating the triumph over the inequities and issues facing the Hispanic community today. The community comes from many parts of the world that speak many dialects of Spanish, represent a variety of races, and share the values of love, of family, and culture. I was raised in an Argentinian household in this country and identify as a Latina. Before we begin tonight's forum, I would like to provide some high level context on the issues and inequities that were impacting the Latino community residing in San Rafael before the pandemic. 30% of San Rafael's population is Latino. The issues we are discussing this evening are directly impacting this community. And just like my parents, the American dream they brought with them to the US. According to the Race Counts website, Marin County ranks the first most racially disparate county in California. The pandemic has exacerbated the inequities in economic opportunity, health access, housing, and education as reported by this website, as well as other recently published studies. As Omar Carrera, who runs Canal Alliance notes, structural inequalities in the canal long predate the pandemic, but COVID has made them far worse. Local health officials are telling us that Latinos make up about 16% of Marin's population and account for over 70% of COVID-19 cases in the county. The local housing crisis is on the brink of a catastrophe that has impacted many, but one whose full impact has not yet been realized. The eviction moratorium only postpones the inevitable major housing meltdown facing San Rafael and Marin County. We are already seeing evictions in low-income communities in other states, and we know that California will not be spared from a similar outcome. Our sense of urgency to take action on housing issues is coming from a place of knowing 
that things will get much worse in the coming months. What plans and models do you advocate to prevent evictions of low-income tenants and small businesses? Mahmoud Shirazi, please begin the response to this question. You have four minutes to share your answer. My personal experience of the canal area, that's where I live myself, in the heart of San Rafael. I hear there are some people trying to buy their apartment buildings and raise their rent. It appears we're having some technical difficulties with Mahmoud's connection. So um, Kate, why don't you um, answer this question and we'll come back to Mahmoud. Thank you. Housing has been an issue in Marin County and San Rafael ever since I've been here the last 25 years. And prior to being on the council, I was on the planning commission where I really learned and understood about uh, how important it is that we have land use decisions that support our community and our diverse community. So in, summer, in the Canal neighborhood, we have a lot of unique, awesome things going on. Um, one is, hopefully be awesome, is the designation of an opportunity zone. This is a designation that came down from the federal government. And it could be a good thing or not a good thing, depending on how the city manages it. The city is paying close attention to the ramifications of the opportunity zone, it has to do with development and trying to put protections um, in place. So any development that occurs keeps the people that are there. And if buildings are purchased or people are moved out, that they are supported and given financial support. The city understands how important it is to keep our housing stock and keeping the folks that are there living there. In addition, we recently applied for some state or some local funds called Priority Development Area Funds. And with that, it will enable us to do the important type of planning that we need to do in the canal for both residential and commercial. As Stephanie mentioned, there's two parts to it. We need to have employers in the canal neighborhood. These funds will enable us to work with the community to find out what it is you want, how you want to build your neighborhoods and your businesses so it reflects uh, the best part of the community and um, is something that you are excited about and can help us create. In terms of tenant protections, I'm very proud of the council. We have passed tenant protections over the past couple of years having to do with just cause evictions, mandatory mediation. We've addressed source of income discrimination. We recognize that these tools are important so that the landlords and tenants are more on equal footing. In addition, right now in response to the pandemic, the city of San Rafael, along with the county and the Marine Community Foundation and other cities and towns, are giving money to a local, uh, to Legal Aid, which is a, a, a local uh, law group, helping tenants understand their rights. I look forward to continuing to work with our community on this important issue. Thank you. I think the technical difficulties are still going on. We'll just hang out. There we are. I uh, thank you, Kate. We are still having a few technical difficulties, so we appreciate everyone bearing with us um, in this new world where everything is virtual and uh, sometimes the technology is agrees with you, aligns with you, and other times it does not. Um, I don't know if we have Mahmoud back yet. 
So um, what I will do is move on to the next question and we can always circle back with him to give him an opportunity to answer the question. Um, so Marin County has long resisted growth in the name of environmentalism. Almost 85% of the county is off limits to development. At the same time, affordable housing in Marin County is all but unavailable and racial disparities and segregation continue. Marin has a reputation among developers as the hardest county in California in which to build low income housing. What are the major obstacles to achieving housing equity, affordable housing and low income housing longer term? What is your vision for overcoming these challenges? Kate Collin, please begin the response to this question. You have four minutes to share your answer. That is a great question. And honestly, I need way more than four minutes, but I will do my best. Um, we need all types of housing in San Rafael and especially moderate, low and low, very low income housing. The city of San Rafael, we don't build housing. Developers build housing, and that's an important distinction because your council um, has for years, ever since I've been on it, for seven years, have approved nearly every housing, actually, I think every housing project that has come before it. We are a pro-housing council and community. But what has happened is that when they're approved, they don't always get built. So what we the staff in San Rafael working with the council has done is looking at what are the barriers, what are the reasons why uh, units are being approved, but they're not getting built. And we're learning a lot of different things that have to do with the development process, have to do with timing, and we are starting to address those. We realize that status quo and the way things have been doesn't work going forward. We need to try new tools and a new way of doing things. So my vision is to continue that work, is to continue the planning I mentioned on my previous answer, working with the community so we can attract the type of development and the type of housing that we want. And I'll finish by saying that senior housing is incredibly important. We have some new projects coming up as our junior dwelling units and accessory dwelling units. How do we continue to have those infill units into the community? Thank you. Thank you, Kate. So um, I believe, unfortunately, we're still having technical uh, difficulties with Mahmoud. So I'm gonna keep moving through the questions. And then again, we will circle back and give Mahmoud an opportunity to answer all of these really um, important questions uh, that are impactful to the Latino community here in San Rafael. So I'll move on to the next question. We know that COVID-19 has placed a strain on city budgets due to decreasing sales tax revenue. Small businesses have been unable to stay open in response to pandemic protocols. And as they can no longer keep their doors open, we are seeing an increase in the San Rafael unemployment rate from 2.3% in February to 8.8% in July and this is data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This data does not take into account people who are not applying for unemployment insurance. What is your position on Measure R to increase the local sales tax rate by a quarter percent for nine years? Do you think the timing of the sales tax increase is appropriate given the challenges presented by the pandemic? So Kate Collin, uh, please begin the response to this question. You have four minutes to share your answer. Okay, before I address Measure R, um, I, I do wanna address the unemployment rates. And unfortunately, San Rafael is not unique in those statistics. They exist throughout Marin County, throughout California and throughout our nation. So the type of support that we can continue to give our local businesses so that they can continue to open safely and start to be productive again is incredibly important. On the November ballot, in addition to the mayoral race, is Measure R. On it, it is an additional sales tax of 25 cents. Let me explain that. 
So let's say you're purchasing something that's $100. In addition to that $100, in addition to the current sales tax, it'd be an additional 25 cents. And please know that that sales tax, that does not apply to groceries or to prescriptions. Measure R will give the city flexibility to continue to do the programs that are important to all of us. Programs involving safety, dealing with potholes, making sure that our street lights are on, making sure that uh, our trash is picked up. That is, those are the types of things that the funding will help us continue to do. Um, I think I'll stop there. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kate. All right, so um, I, um, I'm going to move on to the next question. Okay. Um, and then hopefully we'll we'll give Mahmoud a chance to answer all the questions one after the other when he's able to reconnect. Um, so our next question is, effectively addressing the issues brought on by COVID-19 requires a collective response that brings together businesses, workers, property owners, financial institutions, government, schools, and hospitals. What actions would you take to build a coalition for a more just society to remove historical inequities and to rebuild the economy? Furthermore, how would you make sure that the change is both systematic and sustainable? These are wonderful questions. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You can, Kate Collin, please begin to response to this question. You have four minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Stephanie's absolutely right. The impact on COVID has been felt by everybody, but it's been especially felt in the canal, having to do with the shuttered businesses, the transmission rates. And I'm proud of what the county has done, Marin County has stepped in to provide the services, providing the support. But we need to address some of the bigger issues here. And I have to give a shout out to Canal Alliance that is leading that effort and, and is bringing agencies and the right stakeholders into the room. I have experience with this type of systemic change in the work that I have done around homelessness. When I got on the council seven years ago, community-based organizations were doing their work, the county was doing their work, the city was doing their work, but we weren't working together enough. Through lots of meetings and lots of conversations, we figured out how the system could be improved, how homeless folks could receive the support and ultimately the housing that they wanted. And it required that people started to do, people meaning the agencies and the city and the county, to do things a little differently. But by coming together and talking about where the barriers were and addressing those, we've changed the system. That was a systemic change. So I know we can do the same thing to address some of these bigger, deep issues that exist in the Latino community. We need to do that. We love how diverse and, and inclusive our community is, but we need to work together to specifically address everything from education with our education partners, health with our health partners, as well as our policies with the government agencies. And I'm looking forward to doing that with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Um, and you gave us really a great lead into the next question. Um, uh, in partnership with Stephanie Hafner, the Executive Director of Legal Aid of Marin, and Chandra Alexander, the Chief Executive Officer at Community Action Marin. Um, Omar Carrera, Chief Executive Officer at Canal Alliance, wrote an urgent letter to local elected officials calling for a strong and much needed response to the devastating effects the pandemic continues to have on Latinos in Marin County and in California. We shared a copy of this letter with the candidates prior to this event. The letter presented a series of draft recommendations focused on health, housing, and local businesses as a starting point for an immediate collective impact response to short-term pandemic recovery and long-term strategic planning for stability. What obstacles 
are you expecting to face building this collective response in adopting the recommendations described in the letter? And how would you overcome them? Kate Collin, please begin the response to this question. You have four minutes to share your answer. Thank you. I'm honored to be part of the task force that has been assembled to start working on the issues uh, that were outlined in Omar Carrera's original letter. And it's interesting because we have the urgency of what is in front of us right now, the pandemic, and we have the systemic change that we want. And when we talk about obstacles, um, I, when you have government agencies, we're among friends here, right? When, we're, when we talk about government agencies, there can be bureaucracy, there can be rules, there can be, this is the way we've always done it. And I say that because I experienced it in the homeless example I gave earlier. But we know that at the root behind every bureaucracy are people, right? They're people that are actually putting that into play. So those obstacles is figuring out, are there policies, are there systems in place from the civic standpoint that we can start to address? as your current vice mayor and hopefully as your next mayor we can address the ones that have to do in the civic realm but really to tackle those three areas that stephanie mentioned we need to have the other agencies in here what i found is having the right people in the room having the people that can make decisions around health care around the economy around business improvement and I'm delighted in that we live in an incredibly engaged, wonderful community. And I know those folks are already coming together. They were on the meeting that I was at today. So I, and it's always, actually, I was going to say, it's always uh, challenging when you try something new. But I know we have the vision and a shared vision of having uh, the community health and the support uh, and the housing support that we all want to see. So again, I look forward to rolling up my sleeves liter literally and figuratively to start making the changes we need to see. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Um, we've actually run through all of our questions and I believe Mahmoud is, is back online with us. So if you'll all um, bear with us, we will run through the questions one more time so that Mahmoud has um, an opportunity to answer them. And then we'll end with some closing remarks. So I'll begin with the first question. Hello, Mahmoud, welcome back. I'm going to run through all the questions Thank again. <laughs> so let me begin. The local housing crisis is on the brink of a catastrophe that has impacted many, but whose full impact has yet been realized. The eviction moratorium only postpones the inevitable major housing meltdown facing San Rafael and uh, Marin County. We are already seeing evictions in low-income communities in other states, and we know that California will not be spared from a similar outcome. Our sense of urgency to take action on housing issues is coming from a place of knowing that things will get much worse in the coming months. What plans and models do you advocate to prevent evictions of low-income tenants and small businesses? You have four minutes to share your answer. As I mentioned earlier, I uh, live myself in the canal area, so I'm uh, pretty familiar with the problem firsthand. Um, the, the area is, uh, is uh, overcrowded because there's not enough housing available, but there are programs that I have for every neighborhood, especially the canal area, that we can pick up uh, properties that we can convert it basically into a um, commercial a property if they are in the residential area and vice versa. And that one program would solve a, a little bit of our problem, but we have to have enough funds and the, I have to get involved with other agencies in the Marine County, especially in San Rafael, 
and look for funding. And if I have the funding, I have the solution basically to house um, a, a, a higher percentage of these people in every neighborhood that we look to pick up a good property and manage it ourselves, basically. Um, this has been a, a problem for a long, long time. But if I can tackle this area, basically, then we are going to be successful in the future. Our, our success lays on a very crowded area that has a lot of good working people involved. And it's time to get into the solution rather than talking about it. And I think when I get in, I have enough programs to solve the problem as far as I'm looking for funding. And that's, that's basically what I'm looking for. Thank you, Mahmoud. So this is a good lead into our next question. Marin County has long resisted growth in the name of environmentalism. Almost 85% of the county is off limits to development. At the same time, affordable housing in Marin County is all but unavailable and racial disparities and segregation continue. Marin has a reputation among developers as the hardest county in California in which to build low income housing. What are the major obstacles to achieving housing equity, affordable housing, and low-income housing longer term? What is your vision for overcoming those challenges? You have four minutes to share your answer. As I mentioned earlier, I have programs for every neighborhood. This is not a, a problem that we can solve all at once. Every neighborhood has to have affordable housing for its members. But remember, we have to have enough income basically to be able to afford those. So it goes hand in hand. And there, there must be uh, basically programs that will come from different agencies to help these people and then the city can put the program that I'm talking about together and, and then we can accomplish these goals together um, to, to, to basically house um, in, in the very crowded area. Um, people don't have to live in that area all at once. Uh, they can, we can spread out basically people throughout the city, but the, the, the program that I'm talking about is uh, coming from every single neighborhood. And if we can uh, pick up good properties in different neighborhoods, uh, we can accomplish our goal and uh, spread people out in different parts of the, the city and uh, basically bring the uh, crowd down and um, and we did with a lot of problems that we have in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. We're going to move on to the next question. We know that COVID-19 has placed a strain on city budgets due to decreasing sales tax revenue. Small businesses have been unable to stay open in response to pandemic protocols and as they can no longer keep their doors open, we are seeing an increase in the San Rafael unemployment rate from 2.3% in February to 8.8% in July. And this is data from the Bureau of Labor of Statistics. This data does not take into account people who are not applying for unemployment insurance. What is your position on Measure R to increase the local sales tax rate by a quarter of a percent for nine years? Do you think the timing of a sales tax increase, increase is appropriate given the challenges presented by the pandemic? You have four minutes to share your answer. Obviously, everybody has felt the pandemic. Uh, and before the pandemic, this has been a big problem. Um, 
if if the city budget allows us to see a quarter percent sales tax, uh, let's be it. Um, if they need that quarter percent tax to operate the city in the proper way, um, let's be it. Let's do it. But I like to put the finish to the measures when I get into the offer, office. There is no more measures needed if everything is taken care of properly. COVID-19 has created a lot of problems for businesses, but there are a lot of potential in the canal area. There are a lot of businesses with a lot of potentials and money that they operate. We can find those people out and work with them. They, they don't easily come and introduce themselves to you, but you have to be living in the area, as I have been, to know firsthand that these people are available and when you go talk with them and, and ask them to come and, and, and solve this problem together, that's why I'm coming in uh, to, to get the help of a community so we can find these people to, to, to solve our problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. I'm going to go on to the uh, next question. Um, effectively addressing the issues brought on by COVID-19 requires a collective response that brings together businesses, workers, property owners, financial institutions, government, schools, and hospitals. What actions would you take to build a coalition for a more just society to remove historical inequities and to rebuild the economy? Furthermore, how would you make sure that the change is both systematic and sustainable? You have four minutes. I would like to set up portable scanner throughout the city. I like to give thermometer to people so they can check their, their, their temperature. We have to tackle this problem from the get-go and from the beginning. We just don't want this um, virus to spread. We just want to make sure that it won't spread. So scanning people and making sure that the ones that they are affected will stay away from the rest of us, will give us a, a go-ahead for the rest of the community. We will get together and uh, put programs together. Um, so every business, they're already doing it, but not, not every single business they're doing it. We have to encourage every business to ask people for their temperature and if they are affected, they won't let them basically in or they won't serve them. We need to find out the ones that they are infected and then take care of the ones because the infected ones are the ones are infecting others. This issue has not been taken care of from the root. So when I get into office, I will put scanners all over the place and check people's temperature to see if they are infected or not and then they stay away and the rest of the people can basically continue doing what we have been doing best, which is operating you know, our businesses and doing our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. We're going to move on to our um, final question. Um, in partnership with Stephanie Hafner, the Executive Director of Legal Aid of Marin, and Chandra Alexander, the Chief Executive Officer at Community Action Marin, Omar Carrera, the Chief Executive Officer at Canal Alliance, wrote an urgent letter to local elected officials calling for a strong and much needed response to the devastating effects the pandemic continues to have on Latinos in Marin County and in California. We shared a copy of this letter with the candidates prior to the event. The letter presented a series of draft recommendations focused on health, housing, and local businesses as a starting point for an immediate collective impact response to short-term pandemic recovery and 
long-term strategic planning for stability. What obstacles are you expecting to face building this collective response in adopting the recommendations described in the letter and how would you overcome them? You have four minutes to share your answer. As I mentioned, if we handle the a problem from the beginning, it won't spread. Um, I want to increase the sales, even though we have um, empty front stores in downtown area, but by scanning people and finding out the ones that they are affected, the rest of us can get together basically and following the instructions that the health department has put together. We have to tackle this problem and increasing the sales is one good strategy to combat this problem. We have to bring people together to give them hope. We have to ask people to come and open up doors and stores so we can continue our life. But there are ways that we can handle these things properly without infecting others. Obviously, this is not going to be like what it was before, but if we can increase the percentage of the activity um, more and more every day and increase the sales um, more and more every day, then that is an area that we have accomplished uh, uh, very much, and that's what is needed right now. And I hope I'll be the one that uh, put everything together and encourage people to continue that path. Thank you, Mahmoud. And, uh, and thank you for, for hanging in with us there with those technical difficulties. I'm glad that you were able to answer all the questions. Um, and uh, we're gonna move on to, uh, to our final remarks here for the evening. Um, we want to thank Desire to Inspire for providing the innovative technology, hey Trevor, <laughs> and expertise yes. enabling us to share yes. this event live in two languages simultaneously. Um, thank you, Annabel Guri, for providing simultaneous interpretation in Spanish for this event. Thank you, candidates, for joining us this evening and sharing your vision and perspectives and you know, dealing with all the technical issues this evening. I feel like we were able to hear everyone's um, you know, answers, um, not exactly as we had planned, but I feel like everyone had an opportunity um, to speak and, and uh, address the questions of the day. Uh, you will each have one minute for a brief closing statement. So Kate Collin, please share your closing statement you have one minute. Thank you to the Canal Alliance and especially Fernando Barreto and Stephanie McNally for organizing this forum and all the people literally behind the scenes, behind the screen. I'm honored to have received the endorsements of many local organizations like the Marin Democrats, the Marin Firefighters, and the San Rafael Chamber of Commerce. They recognize that I'm the right person at the right time to lead our community in the years to come. I hope tonight you got to know me a little better and are feeling hopeful at the leadership that I currently bring to you as your vice mayor and as I would continue to bring as your mayor. Over seven years, I've demonstrated my commitment to the Latino community in the Canal neighborhood. And with your vote, we will make history as San Rafael has never had a female mayor in 147 years. I hope to receive your vote in November, but be sure to vote no matter what. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate, for joining us this evening. Mahmoud Shirazi, please share your closing statement. You have one minute for a closing statement. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, Canal Alliance, Fernando. And I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, um, but here we are. I would love to get into office and get to work.
I am not a politician. I'm a business person that gets things done. Maybe nobody recommend me, but I want the voters, the ones, the constituents, the ones that they are most important to take this issue to heart and just take a good look at it and see who is going to get things done. I have been doing things and running businesses for many, many years. And I am the person that wants to come in and work with the community of Marine and San Rafael to just tackle these problems. For me, they are not that big of a problem. With you behind the scene, giving me the yes vote, we can overcome any obstacle, no matter what. We are all one, one love, one voice, and one heart. And that's the motto of the new San Rafael mayor, Mahmoud Shirazi. I appreciate your help. And I hope we will get there together to show what we are talking about. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. Um, I want to thank our audience for bearing with us. This is the new reality of our lives. And um, sometimes um, the, uh, the technology gods are shining down on us, and sometimes they are not. So thank you for bearing with us this evening. I hope you were able to get to know these two candidates better through this um, event. Um, a reminder um, that in order to support these candidates, you must be registered to vote in Marin County. So. Um, to register online to vote, you can, uh, in the upcoming election, you can go to canalalliance.org. We have a link that will help you uh, register to vote. Uh, the, the recording of this event will be shared on the Canal Alliance Facebook page and website. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night, everyone. And uh, thanks again for joining us.